So what's going on guys? How we doing out there? TGIF, happy Friday. Look at that, just bumped my camera right before I started. How unprofessional of me. Alright, we're good to go now. How you guys doing out there? What's new? Uh, happy post 4th of July for those that celebrate. Uh, fun time for me. The wife and family went over to one of the local casinos. Um, I'm, I'm south of the Strip here in Las Vegas. But the cool thing about it is they had yeah, they had a kind of a short show, but then we were just looking north up the Strip, and you had nothing but fireworks, man, everywhere. Just a fantastic view, just like right on the horizon, just this total show of like fireworks all over the place. About half of them probably illegal, being lit off by people in their, in their houses, but, you know, hey, who cares? Not my neighbor. So, very entertaining. So, I hope you guys, if you were celebrating the 4th, you, you folks here in the U.S., hope you had a good 4th. So, um, what am I going to do today? Well, you know, I'm kind of in the home stretch, and, you know, at least for in terms of getting ready for San Diego Comic Con, and there's not a ton I need to do. So, what I'm considering is actually sort of wrapping up today and maybe hunkering down next week, sort of kind of going offline for the week, just so I can make, a, make sure I'm totally ready for San Diego Comic Con. But the trade off is, is my intention will be to actually do some broadcasting from San Diego Comic-Con live on Twitch while I'm down there. Never tried that before. Uh, well, obviously, since I wasn't even doing Twitch last year. But, um, yeah, a remote Twitch thing. I, I obviously, probably wouldn't last too long because, number one, I'm not sure if the reception is going to be crap there. And number two, I'm not sure if my battery on my ancient old phone will last that long, too. So, I don't know. It could be a bit of a crapshoot, but at least give you guys a sense of what it's like, maybe. You know, at least you can see my setup and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, so yeah, so the trade-off might be the fact that I might uh, make today the last day before San Diego Comic-Con. Um, and then having said that too, I, I'm going to probably have to uh, cut it short today. Probably uh, sneak out of here at 5, just because I got to go pick up the banners and all that kind of stuff that I had printed. Because the place that I got printed at, um, local, nice, thankfully, but they, they only have a 5 to 6 o'clock pickup window, right? You got to go there that one hour and pick it up, otherwise you do not get it. And I don't want to risk, you know, losing it after a few days. So, long story short, uh, I'll be hanging with you guys for a couple hours, but probably not to my usual six today, so I can make sure I get over there and get it all picked up. But just as well, because there's not a ton of stuff that I need to handle at this point, uh, my thought today was that I would uh, try and integrate, as the, the thing said on the, the posting there, try and integrate a little uh, internal anal analytics. Well, let me try that again. Internal analytics. Hey, there you go. So the idea would be that uh, so when I'm at San Diego Comic Con and the people playing the game, I'll get a sense of um, how frequently they play, right? You know, when's the last time someone played the game? So how frequently people are walking up and trying it, how far they get, and things of that nature, right? You know, and then what, where do they die in the game? You know, and do they win? Do they lose? You know, do they get hit by more glomers? Do they hit more of the, the lava? That kind of stuff. So. That is probably going to be the, the gist of it today. Uh, I haven't really played, I think I tackled this like years ago, trying to write out to a text file, but it has been years. So this is going to be a bit of learning curve for me just to work this out. The idea will be, and then this will be like aimed towards Android, although at least initially I'll be dry, designing on the PC and I'll you know adjust it later for the Android. So the objective here will be to create a text file, write to it, read it, and rewrite to it, that kind of stuff. But uh, before I jump into that, in case there's anyone new, uh, I will do a quick rundown of what I got here. So this is a game called uh, Triple Troubles, right? And it is actually based on the Tribbles from the Star Trek TV series. And yes, before you ask, I do actually have permission to do this. It is licensed. So it is legit. I'm not just kind of like winging it and hope nobody notices. No, CBS has too good a lawyer, so I would never try that. So... The gist of it, now what I have is I have a license to use Tribbles, the likeness, the name, and the glommers, which were created in the animated version of Star Trek by the Klingons, is something that would actually eat Tribbles, right? And that's pretty much the extent of my, uh, <laughs> what I'm allowed to use. So there won't be Klingons, there won't be Bones, Kirk, Spock, there won't be any of that, but there will still be kind of like Star Trek-esque element to it, more towards the animated series size. But, you know, so there'll be aliens and creatures of that nature. So, having said that, let me show you a quick rundown in case you hadn't seen the game before. Uh, in terms of gameplay, it's going to be very arcade-ish. 
kind of similar to sort of like a Splunky Super Meat Boy down well type gameplay mode, uh, but not quite as punishing. It's still a challenge. I've put it in front of some people and, you know, they're still having, you know, when you first start playing the game, you do die a lot. Uh, for me, not so much just because I've been playing this way too much already. Even though the game is just a little over two months in development, but I'm already getting too good, <laughs> right? So, you know, like that, you know. So I, at this point, I know where all the bodies are buried, and I kind of know the best way to play it. So it's less of a challenge for me at this point. But it's still fun, you know, and I, I still screw up all the time. So you watch, I'll still mess this up here at some point. Gotten lucky so far. And then when you press on, you have these little lava spews, right? So you gotta time that right, make sure you don't hit them. Uh, those are glomers, by the way, that were attacking me. And those are the little creatures that were created in the Star Trek animated episode entitled More Tribbles, More Troubles. And those are the two things I do have rights to. Is tribbles and glomers. Um, and if you watch the animated version of Star Trek, the glomers have sound effects, but they're just like electronic squeaking noises so I sort of took liberty on that so the glomers have kind of my own specialized sound effects but I think just a little more interesting oh shoot there you go I got hit there you go that was a sloppy point right there so he attacked me but still going oh that was really <laughs> careless but I got away with it all right so you get five hits and then there'll be hidden areas that allow you to use the so the, the green stuff that I'm picking up is Quadratricicali, which is what was used in the series. That's what Tribbles were, were known for, is eating all the, the Quadratricicali, QTC, foodstuffs. And um, so you collect that, right? And you can use that. And then there will also be gems, which you can also use to trade in for health power-ups. And, and I'm going to... Oh, that was sloppy. Uh, there will also be some other power-ups that you can come across. Um... What I'm planning on is a temporary invincibility kind of concept, a brief uh, health replenish, and maybe like a sonic attack. Since he has that, that screech noise, I think that'd be a good one that he could use to knock out an enemy, right? Maybe not kill it, but at least disable it so you could then squish it. That's the thought. I haven't implemented that yet. That'll be coming, but that's the intention. So, there you go. There it is. So this is the this is simply the demo. This is only like I said, this is only about a little over two months worth of work. And right now it's just me and a very talented artist named Daniel Thomas who's doing all the 2D art for me. So I'm doing all the game programming, the animation, and everything else. But so for just being a little over two months in, I'm really happy with the results so far. But this is only a small fraction of the game. The uh, the premise is is Tribble gets caught. Uh, you know what? Let me bounce back. I should have come over to the main menu scene here. Yeah save that don't think I change anything but all right so the game will actually start like this right and the premise is is that the triple is caught on a spaceship eating their QTC eating their foodstuffs and gets beamed into the core of a planet whose core is actually molten core right which is expanding and that's the whole idea is that that's why you saw that lava kind of constantly rising up because you got to stay ahead of it right so you don't get toasted yourself but you progress from there into a different uh, territory, be like a canyon type thing, and then onto um, a, a jungle, like an alien jungle, and then you'll inadvertently get beamed back onto the ship that you started on. So it, you know, so you go through all these different environments, right? And then this is kind of cool. This is the main menu. Uh, if you guys were watching the stream from a few days ago, um, I guess it was, actually, I guess it was last week that I did it, or maybe it's Monday. I don't know. It's a bit of a blur. But, so originally I was going to have this sort of just be the introductory main menu and just have like the AI controlling the triple here. But then I realized if I let you control it, right, and the only way you can start the game is to physically move them around and sort of discern the fact that you can move and jump, then that's almost like a quasi-tutorial before you even start the game. So that was kind of a nice uh, evolutionary concept that I didn't plan, but I'm happy it came out that way. And then there's a full-on tutorial by coming over here that gives you all the specific details in case you want a, a more deeper rundown. Most people probably just buzz through it and just want to play the game and figure it out as they go. That's my guess. <clears throat> okay, so having said all that, now I got to sit there and try and put together... Um, so this ought to be fun. I did find a little cheat sheet here. Let me grab this. Bear with me one second. What do we call this? 
handle text file. All right, so I found this on a Google search. So let me come up into my scripts here. Say create handle text files. And yeah, this actually, I believe this is created by Unity themselves. Let's see. Or yeah. Yeah, I think there's actually Unity themselves that came up with this little solution. So it is a simple C sharp script that will handle. Oh, if I click on the right thing, that will handle uh, loading and writing to and uh, you know adding additional content to a text file. So let me see if I did this correct. Like so, right? Handle text file, and it hates it already. Look at that. An explicit. Are you missing a cast? Great. So. <laughs> so much for that. Um. Let's see if anyone mentioned that. It's missing because it needs to solve the problem. What is worse? It's not explaining. Not even a screenshot or anything. Um. All right. Hmm. All right, so no one else mentioned specifically what was different here, but all right. So thank you, Unity, for giving me the code. Uh, screw you, Unity, for giving me code that actually throws up errors right from the default, <laughs> right from the start. Uh, um, okay, so as, say as a text asset. Hey. Okay, there you go. Lucky guess, and it looks like it made it happy. All right, assets, resources, test text. All right, and obviously for Android, I'm gonna have to make an external uh, uh, space that I can actually access outside of it. Um, but at least for this, I can, since the PC, I can get access to it with no problem. <clears throat> so, File. Or let's see. Oh crap. Um. All right. So let me save that. Save tools. I'll wait for it to compile. Interesting. Okay. So there's like this tools. Uh, write and read file. Oh. Okay. Then it made test. So I guess it did it. Let's check it out. So again, resources. Yeah, there it is. Excuse me. Okay, so it actually did do it. That's a good start. All right, go away. <clears throat> All right, and then there's the example there. So uh, right string, and then we're gonna do an input here of st oops, string new. call it new string data <clears throat> and then I'll give it at least a default thing so it won't ever error out right new string data all right let's just back over okay Set here. All right, delete that out. Yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead and bounce over to. <clears throat> excuse me. My main game scene. So let's go to scenes. Gameplay. There it goes. <clears throat> and then let's go to game controller. Start that puppy up. All right. And then what we'll do is on start, we'll start a new line. Let's see. <clears throat> Let 
I'm gonna do something here. We'll just say, um, ah, come on, you happy now? Really? Can't do that in here? How about that? Okay, now you're happy. Fine. All right, so I won't do the star. Um, I'm gonna say. For only. All right. So I don't I don't lose track of these guys, and I remember to nuke them afterwards because it's a very specific kind of thing. I just want to be able to track uh, people playing the game during the uh, convention and to find out, just get a little analytics on how they do. I'll do some other proper analytics later on um, once I figure uh, exactly what I need to find. But for right now, this is just going to be my little hack approach for this. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go. I'm going to just make everything strings because I'm going to throw it together as a string anyways. So, um, and I'm in the wrong place. There. Really? Why'd you indent? Okay, uh, so string, we'll call it uh, game start time. Let's see. We have one called time. Oops. Uh, last game time. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, no, wait. Since last. Call it, uh, actually, I guess I can make that one string as well. Since they're all going to get wrapped together anyways. <clears throat> um, and then we're going to do a damage type. Say, um, yeah, I'll just leave. Um, wait, yeah, I can't. That should be okay. I was thinking if I should bust it out into an array or just leave it as a string. No, this is all down and dirty kind of stuff, so I'll just leave it as a string because it'll just write to the end of it uh, for each one. <clears throat> okay. Let's say, and then the thing's gonna be, uh, yeah, damage type. So it'd either be like a lava or enemy. So that's kind of the only two things you can hit at this point. But it'd just be nice to indicate. And then, uh, let's see. Damaged at show progress. All right, I was thinking I was going to try and figure out by this section, but if I just actually report specifically the um, the player's why, I, I could reverse engineer that and figure out exactly where in the level he was anyways. Since I'm not randomizing the levels at this point, the level's kind of hard-coded, so I should be able to always figure out at what exactly what position they hit um, I don't think I'll bother with the, the X I think it's getting too uh, let's see yeah, I guess I could if I if I just send X Y um, let me think about that because I, if I, I don't want to separate with the comma since everything's gonna get um, unless I separate everything separate everything with a semicolon Okay. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. Uh, show where it hit occurred. 
X and Y. All right, I need that, and then, and then this I'll actually record at the end when you've either beaten the game or run out of lives, and that's total QTC, which of course stands for Quadrature to Cali, which is why I say QTC because it's a lot easier to say. Um, and then that's obviously going to be. Let's see. You know what? I didn't leave that as an. an uh, eh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know what? Actually, I don't really need to call that variable because I got that stored as it goes along. As long, uh, as well as the his the um, the enemies as well. So I was gonna write out variables for the collected QTC and enemies, but I, that's already stored. So I'm not even gonna bother creating new variables. That's kind of redundant. <clears throat> So, and then the result. Okay, that should be all I need that I'm not already grabbing somewhere in one of my scripts. So that should be sufficient. Sufficient? <laughs> Sean Connery. <clears throat> sufficient, Miss Money Penny. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's figure this out. <clears throat> so we're going to start with start. Okay, so sun since last, <clears throat> excuse me, is equal to, yeah, I'm going to convert this in a second, <clears throat> excuse me, so we'll say time time minus game start. Really? You're not going to complete that for me? Why not? <clears throat> oh, that's what, okay, because I did cast that as a, a string. <clears throat> you know what? Fine. I'll do that proper. Now it's going to be happy, right? No, it's still not happy. Time. Really? So if I cast as a float and be happy? Nope, you're still hating it. All right, I'm gonna force you to take that. All right, we'll go the other way. Float. Alright, and then let me fix him back to a float. <clears throat> and it's still not happy. What? Put this room. Um, okay, fine. I'll do it this way then. <laughs> Ugly, but it works. Yes. All right, now it's not complaining. Cool. Let's we'll see if that actually does work here in a minute. <clears throat> It's those guys. All right, and then I guess clear these out just to make sure. Um, no reason why they wouldn't be, but I'm just being overly paranoid there. <clears throat> So then this would be damage, so um, let's see, I think it's incoming. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Plus 
player hit. Add player hit. Boom, got it. All right, and of course I got the god mode. <laughs> if god mode, ignore any damage. Runes. Of course I remember you, man. Yeah, we were just talking. How you doing, buddy? Welcome back. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully you're still gung-ho on the whole idea of trying to learn coding and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, man, I remember. How you doing? How was your weekend? Anything new? Pretty tame for me. Mostly just working. You know, it's funny because, you know, when you are a one person business, you know, it's, you, you think that you just kind of sit there and like just make games all the time. But, um, no, you're also doing lots of networking. You're also doing lots of emails, lots of phone calls. And weekends can get away from you really quick. Uh, it was okay, nothing special. Yeah, about the same for me. You know, I'm here in Las Vegas, so got to watch some fireworks for the 4th of July, which was pretty nice. Actually, what am I saying weekend? That's it. I'm, I'm sorry. This is Friday. <laughs> I'm so turned around. You know, the wife stays home, right? And it completely throws off my schedule. I'm thinking it's like this is Monday or something. Wow, I am so twisted now. I'm so backwards. I have no school, so it's the same for me. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's the only way I can orient myself is if my wife is home, then I go, hey, it's weekend. But no, it was a trick because yesterday was a holiday. So... I'm so confused on what day it is. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I vaguely remember what it's like to be out of school, you know, for summer school, that kind of stuff. Long time ago. Don't miss it. No interest in going back. Uh-uh. Nope. Homework. Ooh. No thanks. <clears throat> okay. So at this point, now we can find out all this good information. Use as a reference. Uh, I watched a lot of tutorials, but I don't really know what to do now. <clears throat> uh, I spent two hours today and yesterday. My suggestion would be to come up with something very simple, right? I mean, like stupid simple, like Pong, right? That kind of simple, you know? Or, you know, uh, Breakout or something game wise, very, very simple and just kind of push ahead, you know? I think one thing that people kind of stumble on is when they first, because you have all these this, these exciting ideas and you want to do them right away, uh, but they tend to be overly ambitious and then you end up hitting a lot of brick walls. So I think it's better, you know, brick walls, breakout. See, there's a, bring it all full circle. Um, so that would actually be my suggestion, would be to um, just consider something really simple in gameplay, right? Really, really simple. Maybe look at a couple of uh, popular hyper casual games, and if there's something that's interesting, maybe try and make your own version of it, you know, and then that hopefully will get you started, and that will sort of quickly show you the things that you, that you don't know yet, right? And hopefully will give you the opportunity to look specifically for help in that area, and then hopefully learn how to do that, and then over time, you know, it'll just start coming naturally to you. But so that's my suggestion. You know, if you just want to get started with something, I would say something super simple, like Breakout or Pong, or just, you know, any one of those kind of simple things, right? Where you just have like platforms and a ball bouncing on it, and you have to go up on more higher platforms or something. You know, that's just my suggestion. <clears throat> All right, so, and then let's see, we don't know, actually, crap, we don't know at this point what we did hit, do we? All right, so I may have to do this not here. Oops, that's not what I was trying to hit. <clears throat> that's funny, I just threw that, didn't even hit that. Okay, there we go. So we probably shouldn't do this over here. We probably should do this under player. Since I don't have access to the information I need here for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these guys out, but this guy, and then let me go into my, my scripts. And then go into my player controller, bring that up. There it goes. <clears throat> Alright. So, I mean, is that runes? Is that your kind of thing? You're, you're just not quite sure what idea you have? Or. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, one of my problems with school is that my IT teacher doesn't literally teach us anything. <laughs> you're not the first person I've heard say that. And I even have personal experience in that. 
you know, not in computers, but in a similar kind of situation. He legit just sits in class on his phone, really. And he gets away with it because he is close with the principal. So I am trying to learn myself. Man, I'm sorry to hear that. That's <laughs> that's depressing. I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh. That that really is depressing. But um yeah, I would I would just say, you know, like you're doing. I would just say um you know, I mean, 2 hours is a good start and there's going to be a lot more of that, you know. Um it sounds maybe harsh in a big word, but he <laughs> oh jeez. Okay, okay. Let's not cast any aspersions on anybody, but, uh, <laughs> okay, jeez. <laughs> All right, well, maybe it's good that he just keeps to himself then. Uh, <laughs> Man, you're going to derail me too. Okay, so my suggestion is, uh, you know, either come at it one of two ways, right? Either just keep going into tutorials, which I know the tutorials can kind of get, you know, really kind of dry and boring, or you can come up with something simple like I was suggesting before, right? And just start pushing that direction, trying to make a game. And, you know, right from the start, you're going to hit a situation going, I, I don't even know how to do this, right? And then you'll do some tutorials, but you'll be taking that tutorial information and adapting it to your specific need. And I think to me, at least in my own personal experience, that's the way I learn this stuff best, right? Is when I look at what other people have done and sort of tinker with it and conform it to what I need. Uh, for me, it sticks better than just watching some boring tutorial where I just kind of replicate everything they're doing because I, I frequently don't really learn as much that way, you know. And I'm I'm old, so I'm still suffering from that old dog, new tricks kind of syndrome. But once again, that would be my suggestion, you know, is, is you know, I would, I would just jump in, right? Start making a very simple game, right? And then just look you know, Google like crazy for any issues you might have, you know, or hit people up. Hit me up too. I mean, if you have specific questions in Unity stuff, uh, if I have the answers, I'm happy to share, man. All right. So, so add player hit. So we take damage. Yeah, of course, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Not a problem. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm I'm not one of those people that like tries to keep this stuff to myself. I look at it as this way. It's sort of like I've joined this little cult known as Unity, and any chance I have to recruit other people to join in the fun, <laughs> you know, I'll do it. Okay. So if we have, and I'm just doing that as a check in case for whatever reason it didn't find the game controller. Uh, this should never be an issue. It should never not find it, but I don't want it to air out in case. So, okay. So add player hit, and then at this point is when we need to start. And then damage type. Let me make sure I make that public now. Yeah, let me back up here and make these guys public. So it can get access to it. The player script, like so. Okay, so let's come at this now. So we say uh, GC damage player. Uh, the damage. Um, shoot, we're still not actually um, getting. <sighs> I'm still not recording what actually hit me there either, am I? That's not helping. Crap. I did a poor job of this, I'm telling you. Take damage. Okay, I gotta do. Oh, I gotta just put it in a different place. That's what I'm doing wrong. All right, so let me grab these guys. So let me not do it here. Let me do it in a different spot. This is nice, but totally wrong. So let me find my other where reports take damage. All right. So for example, here, this is when we get hit by a creature. So. There. So now we know this. So we go uh, uh, GC um, type is equal to, and then um, do it this way. I do plus 
and let's say enemy, comma. Um, doors. Yeah, I'm gonna use semicolons to separate all the other stuff to break those up. So, or something different. Uh, let's see. Or maybe not. Maybe I do leave everything as a comma. Yeah. I'll think about it here in a minute. I'm good enough to start. Uh, do you know what could a monthly income be for a unexperienced guy working online? It's what I'll try to become in like four years. Um, that's a fantastic question. Um, I, I don't know about doing it from online. Um, I mean, I, it seems to me that a lot of jobs would require in-house, you know, to be there at the company. So. Uh, if you're curious about that, I would say look at websites like freelancer.com. And if you look on there, I think you're going to find a range. I think you find some people that are willing to charge $5 an hour. And I think you'll see some people that are willing to charge $100 an hour. You know, And I think it completely hinges on that individual, their experience, and projects they may have worked on previously You know, that can demonstrate their skill set. So um, I will... I will answer that question with a question. Um, instead of giving you a specific number, I'd say, "What is that person able to do after four years? You know, can they can they build an a successful MMO? You know, or can they lead a team doing a successful MMO? Can they handle pretty much any game genre that could be asked of them? So, you know, it's kind of hard to say. You know, so completely based on how much experience you have at that point, because even if you're a master at unity but you've literally worked on no projects you're gonna have a hard time because no one's gonna believe you right you know I mean I would be really you know if I had someone come up and say that I will paint your house right and I, I've been practicing painting houses for 30 years but I've never actually done it professionally <laughs> you know I'd be going thanks but no so I think you know like I was talking with you the other day I think the key thing is is to get get the knowledge first of course but then also start getting experience working on any project you can find for any price right I have no issue with companies that want to char pay very little to someone that's just starting off because I consider it a mutual risk right the person who's doing the work and getting paid little has no experience and they have to prove themselves and the company that's hiring them they may be getting a good deal, but they also may be getting someone that can't do the job, and they're going to invest money in this person only to find out that it's money wasted, right? So, you know, that goes back to what we were talking about before. You know, my suggestion is, you know, get comfortable with the coding. Find anyone that you can work on their projects, right? You know, and, I mean, be it for free, be it for de deferred payment, you know, at least when you're starting. You know, and anyone that says that once you, once you know Unity, you should be able to demand this amount of money they've never worked professionally right just because you say you can do it and but you haven't proven that you can do it or to me are two diametrically opposed things so and that one I definitely speak from experience I've, I've mentioned that before when I started in the visual effects industry I was getting paid crap and I was happy to do it because I had to prove that I could do it and once I did once I proved it my rate shot right up you know <laughs> it hasn't gone back down since uh, well, if $5 per hour is minimum, I'm in a good place because in my country, that's true. Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, you, you mentioned that last time. So, But, I mean, you were I know last time you were mentioning the fact that you would like to get experience enough that you could move out of your country and move somewhere else. But, yeah, if you remain where you are, then, yeah, um, absolutely. And that's that's one of the reasons why I'm making games right now and not still doing animation is because... You know because I'm expensive you know I mean I, I'm in America and I you know I charge more comparative and there's other countries around the world where animators can do you know I won't say as good a work because I'm gonna be egotistical enough to say that I think I do really good animation work but you know that will do animation that's comparable but because of their cost of living can do it much much cheaper right so now I have to compete with those people and quite honestly it's it's hard you know so that is an advantage for you right if you can do it for less but then still demonstrate the ability to do it then absolutely man then you you could actually be in great shape 
uh, I'm trying to firstly remain here and then progressively get better at the job and move somewhere else. That's, and you're, if I remember correctly, you're 16, right? So, I mean, if you're only 16 and you already have this much, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, and you've already got this, you are so better organized than I was when I was in my 20s, <laughs> okay? So, honestly, I think you're doing great, right? Yeah, I mean, I know you want to, like, do everything yesterday, and I get that. I understand the enthusiasm, but absolutely, man, stay where you are, right? Get comfortable, get some history, get some work, right, that you can show, and then, yeah, you'll be able to go other places once you have that resume, once you can demonstrate the fact that you can do that work, and you can you can definitely move, you know, because that'll be a situation that once you have the ability, people will want you, right? But it's just a matter of knowing it and being able to demonstrate that you have done it on projects. Those two things, to me, are like the key things, you know. And I mean, once again, you're speaking to someone that hasn't taken classes, but and I'm not working for a company; I'm working for myself. So that's a bad example. I'll kind of retract that. But you know, that that's what I think is the best approach for you, man. Absolutely. So hang tight where you are. Get started. Yeah. And if you if five bucks an hour is good for you, then absolutely, man. I'd say you could uh, start off working on anything you can find to work on, and then once you have a game or two to show, right, and then put yourself on freelancer, right, and say, here's what I've done, here's my rate, let me make you happy, right, and you will get work. I honestly believe that, you know, and then you can grow exactly like you like. It'll take you a couple of years probably, but, you know, <laughs> 16, man, I barely can remember 16. I <laughs> just remember wasting it. <laughs> just wasting it in comparison. I'm envious of where you're you're focused. You know, you, you seem very focused for your age, which is very commendable. All right. So damage that. Speaking of being unfocused. Damaged at. There you go. And then for this one, like so. So this one we're going to actually kind of add in his exact... Um. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna do it the X N Y. So there you go. Uh, I don't know if pension is a word in English. Oh, it is absolutely. It's a word in English. But here for Army veterans, it is three hundred dollars. Uh. So yes. Uh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But yeah, pensions are definitely something that uh. Pensions are still commonplace uh, for, for military and, and stuff like that, but pensions used to be much more uh, common for older generations for work, you know. But I mean, you know, it, it, previous generations used to get a job and they would work at that job for, you know, 40 years and then retire, right? Uh, nobody works for any company anymore for 40 years usually. That's, that's very rare. So, you know, pensions, I think, tend to be much more of a rare commodity. I think people now have, you know, 401ks, which are personalized savings versions of pensions, I guess. Let's see, so damaged at, and then we'll go, um, and this is player object, so I can go game object. Transform, and I'll just do world position. So I go, uh, position, oh, IntelliSense bit me there. Like that, put a comma in there for that one. Um, we actually work here for 40 years for one company because once you get fired, it's so hard to get a job. Wow, 60% of people are unemployed? Wow, man, that is that is absolutely staggering. Oh my God. 60%. Well, I mean, but, I mean, yeah, you your whole country is, is sort of like in a different state too. I mean, in state and status, I mean. So, but I had no clue it was that much. Wow. <laughs> it's poor. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now I'm feeling pretty humbled at the moment. Uh, I, it just made me feel very appreciative of everything that I have here. Let me switch this back here. Yeah. Yeah. Bosnia, which, I mean, yeah, I, I, I was going to say that, but yeah, you guys... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are definitely an entirely different situation for sure. But, um, hey, look at that. 
Fushini, hey, welcome. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. So, yeah, um, just by the very start, man, you, you definitely have incredibly more complex challenges facing you. But, dude, I mean, I, I, I admire your tenacity all the more, right? For sure. Game object. Makes me, like, want to shut up and work more. <laughs> like, I feel I'm, I'm just being lazy here. All right. Got that one. You know, I was, like, contemplating the, the new season of, of um, uh, Stranger Things. Season 3 came out, and it's kind of like, maybe I should just shut down and binge watch everything. No. I'm going to be a workaholic. I'm going good. How about you? Doing really well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you just dropped in. So if not, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I'm working on, in case you didn't see it before. But if you did, stop me and I'll shut up, so I don't repeat myself and bore you guys to death. But, uh, so the game is actually, um, um, did it really come out? Oh, it did, yeah, yeah. Uh, the new season just came out, uh, like yesterday, I think. Yeah, and I've already watched the first episode, and I'm totally on board. Um, so the game is called, uh, Triple Troubles came out yesterday yeah and happy with it so far so and I gotta tell you my connection to it here in a second but uh, give you a quick rundown on the game so triple troubles is actually based on the triples I keep forgetting to have this handy from uh, the original Star Trek series so if I go like this so if you ever watch a classic episode of Star Trek called the trouble with triples right there you go so you got Kirk and all those fine people on the Enterprise that had to deal with Tribbles. So I'm making a game based on Tribbles, and I do have a license. I have permission to actually use Tribbles. Not much else. Nothing else in Star Trek. So no Kirk, no Bones. Um, that can sense Klingons. Exactly. Yes. And good memory. So the Klingons... So there was an animated Star Trek series, right? And the Klingons actually created... Glomers. So this is a creature that was genetically engineered by the Klingons to hunt and eat tribbles, right? So my partnership is actually with the, the guy that actually wrote the original screenplay and through his company, right? So Tribble Toys is my partnership. So that gives me access to using tribbles and glommers. So for example, I'll show you. So the idea is your tribble gets caught where you shouldn't be and they, they beam them down into the center of a planet as punishment and you have to try and escape out of it. I'll turn on the sound effects here. So here's my glommers, right? And you see they're just waiting for you. They're just waiting to jump all over you. And you gotta watch out for them, right? And then I'll show you, if you don't get out of the way, you can see that these have these little circle pads here. So they have these white spikes that normally they're extended, but some people that are playing it thought that you couldn't jump on them because it looked like you'd take damage. So I changed it so that the spikes only come out when he attacks you. So like this. Like that. You can see the spikes kind of pop out and go away. <clears throat> did I do the animations? Yes! I did, in fact, do the animation. Um, now, I, I, I don't know if you remember, I probably mentioned before, but I've been doing animation for 20 years. Uh, I've been doing animation for TV shows and, and movies and video games for 20 years now. So, the animation is sort of my ballpark. So, there you go. You can squish them like that. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> no worries. No worries. No worries. Um, so, that's the the gist of it um this looks nice thank you i appreciate that so it'll be like an arcadey kind of sort of like a spelunky uh down well right super meat boy but not nearly as hard as those games it'll be a little less punishing and so what you're seeing here oops i just messed up there took some damage so this is about a little over two months for the development so far so we're still in the testing phase uh just early development and I'm going to be going to San Diego Comic-Con here in a couple of weeks and showing the game off there and getting feedback and hopefully getting some press for it. And then there'll be little hidden areas. You can see the cracked tile here, right? It's subtle, but you have to look for those because if you hit it, it reveals whole new sections, right? With more hidden goodness. And there'll be like hidden doorways that will allow you to go into like secondary rooms that allow you to sort of like um, get power-ups, get health, right and stuff like that so you gotta watch out for those but not not put in the game yet that'll be coming here in the future so and then there'll be four different areas right you start off in this like underground environment oh and i'm about to die aren't i 
Um, and then you progress on into like a canyon, and then up into a jungle, and then back on the spaceship that you started on. There we go. Like that. Boom. Oh, and I just died. <laughs> I was looking away. That was poor. So there you go. That is the the concept behind the game. Um. So, Duchess. Oh, I just did a follow. Thank you for that. Okay, it hasn't come up on the screen yet, but there it is. Lushini, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Thanks. So, all right. So I got to tell you my funny story. We're talking about uh, Stranger Things, right? So here's the funny thing about Stranger Things. I have a personal connection to it, uh, especially because, okay, just kind of coincidences, right? So the in season one, spoilers if you haven't seen it, well, it's in the very beginning, first episode. So Will gets abducted, right? So you have Will. My first name is William, right? You have the chubby character Dustin, right? My name is Dustin. And then uh, you have the character of Will. His last name is Byers, right? My grandfather's name is Byers, right? So I have that connection. No, 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 no. I, I've only watched first episode myself on, on season three. So, um, so yeah. So, I mean, like, name-wise, I already have a connection there, right? Uh, so the funny thing is, so the original series takes place, like, on the cusp of 1984 and 85. And I'm actually the age in that year of those characters, right? So I connect to those characters because they were me, right? I mean, I was, like, that nerdy type character. And on top of it, they actually filmed the show in Atlanta, which is basically where I grew up as a kid. So not only do I have these characters that share my names, right, and it's in my time frame, right, I was that age, but they also shot it in the area that I grew up. So for me, it's just so funny that, you know, you know Stranger Things just has this bizarre kind of coincidence connection for me, you know. But yeah, season one was fantastic. I always describe season one as sort of like alien, and then season two as aliens, right? And then season three, I don't know where it's going yet, but looking forward to it. I'm trying my best not to just binge watch like crazy. I'm, I'm gonna try and piecemeal it, and yeah, that's crazy, I know. I know, it's just a kind of very funny coincidence. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really great series, I totally agree. Yeah, I tried to get my wife to watch it, but she doesn't like serious stuff, so she kind of bailed after a couple episodes. I'm gonna see if I can coerce her still back into it but yeah it is absolutely oh okay I don't know if you could hear that in the, the background my wife who has the day off she has a good boss my boss sucks which is me um, so I'm working today but yeah she said she would watch it if I watch it with her so there you go uh, I was watching Walking Dead so much uh, until they absolutely ruined it I was a big fan of Walking Dead as well uh, I can tell you the exact moment I quit and haven't come back since and that was um when we first were introduced to the uh, the uh season six for me i think it was I, god you'd have to refresh my memory it was after the introduction of alexandria um but it was the when they were getting that giant truck full of food right they found it and they met jesus right the, the character named jesus uh no it was pre it was pre negan and it was the the sequence with the truck right and it becomes like this comedy thing, right? Where the and the truck goes in the water. And the thing I hated about that is like there's seven things in a row that are so stupid and had no reason to happen except for the fact that the writers were lazy and couldn't figure out how to deal with it otherwise. And to me, I just I hated that, man. It made no logic. Exactly. Exactly. So I was just like, you know what? If you're gonna be that insulting to me, if you're gonna be that lazy in your writing, then this is my reaction. Click, I'm off. Um, but Negan and all the stuff that happens, um, I didn't have to watch the show. I have friends who have Facebook, so I've pretty much been told everything, <laughs> you know, through various memes. Um, I've already been exposed to pretty much all the stuff that's happened. So, yeah, I hate stuff like that too. I agree, man. That is one of my biggest pet peeves is when writers, you know, and I, I, I say this all the time, when stupid character, when Intelligent characters do something stupid just to advance the plot, right? Because it, it you know, it's uh, just destroys all credibility in the show, in my opinion. Money did it. <laughs> yeah, or maybe it was John DeBont leaving the show, right? Oh, speaking of which, so John DeBont, right? So he was the guy that first initiated the show and then left, right, with some pretty rank, bitter rancor, right? So Jean de Bon is actually taking all of the, a lot of his prized possessions and putting them up on auction, which is kind of a sad thing. I mean, that's usually not a good sign, but you know, it's good.
good for us if we could actually score some fantastic, you know, items from them. But yeah, lots of signed uh, Walking Dead scripts, lots of signed uh, cast photos and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that was it for me. Um, I've I've tried to go back and I've gotten like part of the way through the next episode and I still just don't care. So, I mean, I just, you know, I, I think the series went on too long. I like a, a series that knows when it's time to pull its own plug, right? You know, and my, my ultimate benchmark test is Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is the show that did it perfectly. They knew when it was time to wrap it up and they wrapped it up beautifully. You know, like Prison Break uh, is an example of a show that went on too long or is that a show that, that knew when to pull its own plug? Um, I, I I watched a couple episodes of It's Perfect. Oh, really? Okay. I've never really gotten a chance to, to get into it. Um, I know the characters. They rolled over onto um, um, uh, Legends, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the TV series, which actually I did get to animate that. So I, I worked on those. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Um uh, I watch a lot of anime and now only watch a very few because they have too many cliches. Yeah, th that's that's kind of always been an issue for me with anime too, right? I mean, I have a lot of friends that get really annoyed with me when I talk about the fact that, you know, I want to like this, you know, but yeah, sometimes the dialogue or sometimes the character reactions and stuff are just kind of way over the top for me. Uh, <laughs> you have legit I never watched an anime. Uh, I would say if you want to start, my I mean, so I mean I am really really choosy, right? Pokemon, no. Uh, my suggestion would be something like um, Cowboy Bebop, right? I mean I'm really choosy on my anime, and Cowboy Bebop actually I thought was a, a fantastic animated series. Still has some quirks in there, right? Still has some episodes that annoy me, right? That just like wait, why is the character doing this? Why is the character saying this? But you know. If you've ever watched uh, Serenity or Firefly, the TV series and movie, and you can watch Cowboy Bebop and kind of go, oh, I can see some inspiration here for sure, right? You know, kind of a ragtag crew on a ship, just kind of, you know, ne'er-do-wells doing terrible things, but you pull for them anyways. Uh, Naratu, uh, 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 I, never, I can't even say that right, can I? Naruto. There we go. Hey, got it the third time. When I was about nine and I found it so boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, once again, not to, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but I, I'm old. So my childhood consisted mainly of watching like Looney Tunes, right? You know, the old Warner Brothers cartoons. I wouldn't recommend just one anime. Okay, fair enough. You can toss out a couple examples if you want to. But I think Runes pretty much has his mind made up that it's not that anime sucks, but I think he pretty much believes that animes suck. So <laughs> you might have a hard time trying to sell him on it. But yeah, if you want to toss out some ones that you do like, man, feel free. All right, so I think that's all I need for damage type. Um, yeah, so that gets added compounded, so that's good. Um... You don't want to advertise anime? <laughs> well, okay, well, I mean, well, if you're, like, you know, making some money off of it on the side, then I understand the full disclosure stuff. Uh, I just meant that anime is so vast that I wouldn't say watch this show. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I'm speaking from a very specific, selfish kind of nature, the, the one anime show that I, I really did kind of connect with. But everyone's going to have their own show that they know is perfect, and everyone else sucks in comparison. I actually found it so funny how actually bad they are. Sorry if I offended you. <laughs> uh, you don't tell someone who never watched the series, watch X. Yep, fair enough. Yeah. Give a couple examples. But I, you know, I really don't have multiple examples to give for anime that I can give as a ringing endorsement. So, you know, I, I guess my proper response for what should I watch for anime? Um, Google it. <laughs> Just... Google it and find good examples because I am not <laughs> I am not the keeper of that knowledge. All right, so if I got that, got that, and then at the end of the game, it should be able to write all that stuff out. Okay, so 
this is player control and we have that so uh, game over there we go okay uh, can you star battle royale oh got it start bar I got it got it oh I forgot I gotta put money on it oh shoot sorry I hosed everyone it's just for <laughs> ah I hit enter too fast before I actually entered any value sorry guys Hey, look at that. You picked up a star on the way down, though. And they're off. So I'm curious. So all the people out there that play all these video games that have the Battle Royale gameplay mode, I wonder how many of them actually seen the movie Battle Royale from which it was truly inspired, right? Uh, what are your thoughts on Game Maker Studio? Um, I have no issues with Game Maker Studio. Um, to be honest, I played with it. Um, uh, I guess at this point, like a year and a half ago, there was a potential project. <laughs> you won. Hey, look at that. <laughs> it was rigged. <laughs> oh, and I won 500 gold. Wow, okay. So I guess if you don't enter anything, it's just default to 500 gold. Oh, so anyways, uh, Shini, so to answer your question, um, so Unity right now, when it comes to making an HTML5, something that can run uh, on mobile, Unity can't do it right now, right? There is no way to make a WebGL or an HTML5 game or anything that will run on mobile. So I, I actually looked at Game Maker Studio and was considering that for development of a project that never materialized. But I actually made a uh, just like a word search type program excuse me, using um, Game Maker Pro and I was actually pretty impressed with it. Um, I didn't delve too deep. So I don't know what real uh, limitations it has. I mean, I'm sure it probably creeps up pretty fast, but um, I think it's pretty good for 2D. I don't know if I would be too on board with it as a 3D tool, but if there's any Game Maker users out there, they can correct me if they think that it's it's a viable choice now. But um, yeah, I think it's actually not a terrible choice. You know, if you were just want to get started and play around. I, I think you could do much worse than playing with Game Maker Studio for sure. All right. And now we we'll go uh, print. All right. So and then I guess uh, so if it's game over, that means that he took damage on all five. So we have distance for that for all. Uh, do you play any games actively? Um, I hate to say this, but I really don't. You know, that's to me that's one of the tragic ironies: the fact that the more in the game development I get into, the less time I actually have to play games. Uh, I literally have a couple hundred games um, to play on PC and my consoles, and I just I am so driven in the game making that I have a hard time shutting down and actually playing games on my free time. Um, I want to. I mean, I have absolutely fantastic games just waiting to be played, but I just have not. My, my thing is, and this is funny because you guys that have been around for a while will know this, I keep telling myself that after I finish the next game, I'm going to shut down for a while and play video games, but invariably, as soon as I finish a game, I immediately jump and start working on the next one. So it's just, I need to do a better job of trying to find time to play games. I mean, the last one I played was um, Mad Max on the PC, where I just kind of played from beginning to end and absolutely loved it man that is so much fun I had so much fun playing Mad Max but and that's kinda of my game too I love that sort of exploration you know fighting driving around that kinda of stuff so much fun in that one uh, what would you recommend uh, to a complete newbie in terms of 2D game development okay well my first question would be if you have any experience with programming um, uh, by the way, I really like your positive energy. Thank you. Oh, that's very kind. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, so, Unity, Unity's biggest shortcoming right now is that um, I have zero experience. Fair enough. Unity's biggest shortcoming right now is the fact that there's no way using Unity by itself to create a game without writing code, right? You can buy some plugins that allow you, uh, like, there's Playmaker, right? I can show you that real quick. So, if the store will load, 
Come on, Unity. So if I go Playmaker, so this is a plugin that you can buy. Wow, it's up to $65 now. And the idea is that it creates like a node based flowchart, right? Um, <laughs> zero to 100, I'd, I'd have 10. Fair enough, right? So with something like Playmaker, you have an option of creating some pretty decent games. Uh, Firewatch is a game that was created and, and released on Steam, which is incredibly successful. Kind of like one of those walking sims, right? And for the most part, they created it almost exclusively with Playmaker, right? But the downside is that it's something you have to buy, right? Now, the trade-off is something like Unreal has Blueprint built in, right? Blueprint is this flowchart kind of approach, which means that you can make games without writing a single line of code. The downside is that, uh, and I, my, my Unreal friends can yell at me, but I don't think Unreal does 2D as well. Right? I don't think it's tailored as well as Unity is. So in this situation, um, for someone that's just getting started, I would say that, yeah, actually, um, <laughs> Game Maker Studio is probably a better choice. Uh, Unity is actually working on their own visual editing tools, but to be honest, they won't probably release it for like, you know, a year, maybe. I think they're talking 2020, and I would be really cautious about using it for a long time until after that point because I think they kind of uh, eagerly release stuff that's not quite ready for prime time sometimes. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that demonstrates how I'm not truly a, uh, a Kool-Aid drinker because I'm not going to say that for someone that's just getting started who doesn't really want to, you know, invest any money, right, but just wants to play and get experience, then, um, although actually, you know, I guess Game Maker, you still have the issue of you have to purchase it, but I know that they have like Hummel bundles and stuff like that where they'll have the game uh, Game Maker on sale. I, I think I picked up my copy for just dirt cheap, right? So that's something to consider. So that would be my, my suggestion because I know with Game Maker you can do some pretty robust stuff and really not have to write any form of code. Um, I think you can put in some expressions and stuff to ta kind of tailor stuff, but that really doesn't require any true programming history experience. So. That is my two cents. Uh, anyone else that's hanging out with us can uh, offer their thoughts as well. Have you seen the trailer for the new open world game Raw? And do you think they will be able to make it? I have not, and I don't know. Let's check it out, shall we? Raw video game. Whoa, I'm completely blown out here. Okay. Oh, they're doing it as a Kickstarter. New o new open world survival game. Okay, well they already have their work cut out for them for sure. <laughs> Let me go. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, I'm gonna skip through this. All right. So I'm guessing it's sort of like a, a Grand Theft Auto meets Fortnite kind of concept. Is that? The, the gist of it um, it's going to be great if they manage to do it let's see alright so a lot of intro stuff here I'm going to kind of skip ahead yeah that's feeling very GTA-ish so it's GTA in the first half and then I'm guessing it slides into Fortnite or is it more just like a general sim I just assumed it was everyone goes to war battle royale style oh here it comes no Fortnite? <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. Interesting. Okay, so it does lean more towards the GTA side, right? But less of a storyline like GTA and more of just like surviving on your own. Um, it's like a real-life simulation at its finest. Really big project. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So you kind of get to, uh, so I guess now we're getting into like the Fallout 76 approach, right? Where everything is real and all the characters are real, living their own lives kind of concept. Which, yeah, that's insanely ambitious. And I mean, come on, let's be honest, you know, Fallout 76 didn't exactly pull it off to begin with. So, and those guys have been doing it for quite a long time. So this definitely hits the definition of ambitious. All right. So it's, he said it's Kickstarter, right? Um, and that's funny, they actually have GTA d listed down below. So, obvious connection there. 
Okay, so let me bounce out and say raw video game Kickstarter. Really big project. Yeah, and see, that's the thing that scares me. Indie and really big project are words that normally should never go together. So how, what do they do? They raised... Oh, really? Um, so they raised $115,000. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And if if they're actually using this money to finance the game, then i got to be honest, I don't know if it's ever going to see the light of day. And the reason I say that is um, because, you know, scroll down a bit to see the goals. Okay. Or did I just buzz through it, didn't I? Stretch goals. Let's see. Gameplay. It's way down here, isn't it? Here we go. Uh, map, map works, achieve planes and helicopters. Okay, so that's not even going to be in it, nor boats and motorcycles. So, um, let's see. Has it already passed or is it still in progress? Oh, 10 days to go. Okay, so they can still get some more cash. Advanced weapons, mining support. Um, scroll down a bit to see the, yeah, uh, with the money. Okay. Uh, mining support, runtime road billings. So yeah, so they were kind of hoping that they may stretch out to 350k, but you know, to be honest, they're two thirds of the way through, and they're only a third in there. Yeah, 350 to make it all. Yeah. So then my question is this, right? You know, my question is, um, where are they at in terms of is this being used to truly fund the game, or is this being used as a publicity tool? To get exposure for the game and the money is just sort of like an extra bonus to help them out and they're already financed if that's the case then okay then they're they're cool but if this is actually used to drive the financing and they're trying to make an open world game that is this ambitious and they're going to raise 115k unless these guys are willing to work for five dollars a year <laughs> you know i just can't imagine that that's going to really come together uh really okay they're saying they could make it for a lot less. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, that's okay. People can say that, right? I can sit there and say that, well, I can make this game for $50, right? It's not that hard. You you know, you just get all the assets, you slap it together, and, you know, you do it in Unity, and you can be done in a couple of weeks. So I can say that. Don't mean it's true. <laughs> um, I mean, just as someone that's made games now for uh, the better part of a decade, you know, and very small scale in comparison, um, I think I have a, an okay understanding of how challenging this stuff can truly be. But they are saying that they are buying really expensive models and that they could buy it for less. Uh, I'm not sure what they're talking about. <laughs> all right. Well, if they're spending all their money just buying assets, then absolutely, then they have no chance, right? I mean, you got to have the money to pay the people, right? You know, you can find people that will look at a thing and say, oh, this looks awesome and have passion to work on a project, you know, and that can last for a month or two. But once they start realizing that they're not getting paid and they're working all their time for free, they're going to disappear really fast. So um, let's see. I don't know. They have any kind of uh, release date scheduled. I'm just curious if they're just kind of say or is it like when it's done? Uh, oh, is that, oh, December? Whoa, seriously? Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Estimated delivery date of December? Seriously, that's, that's, like, what? We're talking five months away. Um, I mean, surely much bigger companies got an idea to make real-life simulation but didn't have the courage. Or maybe didn't have the courage or had the... The numbers had the data to prove why it was not the best approach, right? Because I mean, let's look at it. Um, well, I mean, yeah, let's look at Fortnite, right? Because look at Fortnite began as a totally different beast, right? Fortnite was much more of a survival sim, right? But then when they started cluing into the idea that battle royale was the way to go, then they literally they changed the entire perspective of the game and adapted the game to a totally entirely different market, right? Um, yeah, um, yeah, and exactly. I th and I, I'm totally on on board. And this, I, I gotta say, this is pure hubris here. 
They're, they're claiming that the game is going to get released. Estimated delivery date of December 2019. Guys, I hate to say it, but that to me is an incredibly, incredibly big red flag right there. If they're going to say that they can finish this game in six months from now. So, like I said, I mean, that, my question mark is, have they already made the game? Are they already financed? And this money is basically just sort of like a PR stunt, right? Which I've actually suggested that before, too. I have no issue with that. I think that's actually a very good idea to use Kickstart as more of a, a PR tool and less of a finance tool. But if this is truly for financing, then, yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to just, you know, <laughs> that classic line from the movie Taken, good luck. <laughs> you know, good luck. <laughs> I'll just sit back and I'll bust out the popcorn and see how this turns out. Um, let's see. So Killer Whale Games, right? Let's check them out. Um, let's see. They have what kind of history do they have? They have no history. Um, so this is their very first game, right? So they've never. Um, so it was a, a, the German. That looks. I'm guessing. I don't know, but. Um, yeah. So we are a small team of game developers, enthusi developer enthusiasts, who are extremely obs uh, obsessed with detail and realism. That's great, but I'm obsessed with paying my mortgage. Uh, about 400 square kilometers of playable area. So, yeah. Um, my prediction, and I hope they prove me wrong, right? I wish these guys the best, and I hope it goes well for them. But my prediction is either this will never see the light of day, or it will eventually see the light of day sometime way far down the road, but it will be an incredibly empty, hollow world, right? With nothing really happening. But, like I said, I, I hope I'm totally wrong. I hope I'm way off base, and I hope these guys do fantastic. I wish them the best, for sure. Oh, okay. Now they said they're making it for two years, and that it's going to be finished in six to twelve months. Okay. Uh, yeah, Daisy Inc. <laughs> there you go. Um, I don't think it's going to work either. Okay. No, I. No, but I didn't know that they've actually been working on it for two years, right? So that changed a little bit of it, but I still. I don't know. I'm still trepidatious of. I mean, this, right? This word right here, MMORPG, right? S MMO RPG and small team are two items that should never be together, right? <laughs> so, uh, I think that the price for the game will be uh, 15 euros, which is so low for such a game. Oh yeah, that okay. There you go, valid point. So if we come back here, um, close this. Yeah, and then euros, right? So, yeah, about 11 dollars. Really, really? Okay, wait. So that didn't. So uh, for. $28, you can get the game, right? Digital copy of the game. Okay. Excuse me. So, I mean, you know, that's an okay price, but considering most AAA titles are charging $60 for a game, yeah, that is kind of an interest. Excuse me, that is an interesting idea, uh, interesting thought. But, uh, well, no, but they do have the 15, the, the 5 and 10, which is, I guess that's more of, like, you emotionally support us. You don't get a copy of the game, right? But I mean, no, it's, you know, you don't have to apologize because, as far as I'm concerned, you know, 15 euros and 25 euros, there's not a big difference there, right? That's still, I think, both are very low for the amount of game that they're promising, right? But, I mean, I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing them, you know. I, I wish these guys all the best, right? I mean, the trailer looks beautiful, right? And I love the idea of an open world that you can just go adventure around, especially with that kind of size. But I'm just concerned, <laughs> you know. Uh, I, I don't think I'll be clicking on any of these anytime soon, you know. And if I looked at my history for ones that I've supported, I'm pretty much like 50-50 in my success rate. I've backed some that have succeeded, and I've backed some that have disappeared with my money. So, yeah, I, I tend to be more cautious in which ones I back for that very reason, you know. So, I mean, I would be, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, I was right. So they're in, in Firth, Germany. But, um, which, I don't know much about Firth, but I'm assuming it's not, you know, a, a super cheap place to live. So I, I got to assume that those guys got to get some money. 
So, don't know. I mean, thanks for the link, man. I do appreciate it. It's very interesting, and I really do help. You know, wishing the best, but oof, I don't know. Scary stuff, man. All right, so coming back to my stuff, I'm supposed to be focused on. So, what do we have? Um, we're in the game controller, so game start time. We got that. Uh, it is not a big city, I think. Okay. Okay, so then cost of living may be uh, a little lower, but it is nothing like where you come from, right? I mean, that's, I mean, you know, I mean, I got to believe that those guys, <laughs> no no disrespect. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I mean, because you, you were the one who said it yourself, it cost of living, right, in that, that place, right? But, you know, it's just, I, I'm just dubious that you, you say that you can, you know, finance an entire game of that scale, you know, for, you know, like it says, 100K. So they're only asking like 70, and everything was stretch goals, right? You know, that just, that seems so light to me. But I will watch that, man. Uh, if you're around, please keep reminding me. I'm, I'm anxious to see how that goes in the future. How much is regular white bread in your country? <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> it depends. You can get like the, the really cheap stuff is a dollar. If you want the fancy stuff, it's more like uh, five dollars. Um, I, I am a sucker for sourdough bread, so there's one that I like. It's this nice loaf that's like two ninety nine, but I can make eight sandwiches with it. So that is that's my thing. Uh, I'm a big creature of habit too. I eat, uh, since I work out of the home, I eat sandwiches pretty much four times a week. Here, the cheapest is uh, okay. Well, I, wow, that's actually comparable. Oh, or is that eight cents or is that eighty cents? Uh, but the one I get is uh, one fifty. Okay, and I, yeah, I pay two ninety nine for mine, so that's that's double, but eighty cents. Okay, well then that's that's kind of funny. We're actually on comparable levels there, but you know, I am in in Las Vegas as I mentioned before, so Las Vegas is a little cheaper. So you can get sort of like the the store brand of a loaf of bread for if it's on sale for about a dollar, right? But if you're in Los Angeles, where I came from before, then a loaf of bread is about $412. Okay, I'm kidding, but not by much. <laughs> and my parents actually earn a fair amount, so I'm lucky on that side. Oh, that's fantastic. That's great, man. So that gives you, hopefully, more opportunity and more chances. And I, you know, I, I'd say I hope you make the most of it, but from everything you said, dude, it sounds like you're already on your way to, like, you know, doing good things. <clears throat> But yeah, LA, definitely super expensive. And my dad is a graphic designer, so that is where I, I come from. Oh, nice. Well, that's very cool. Yeah, that is very, actually very lucky. Yeah, I, I concur, man. I totally agree. That is great. Yeah, and I mean, same situation, man. I mean, I was very fortunate with my upbringing, and I'm trying to do the best with the opportunities that I've been presented with, for sure. Uh, use his knowledge to advance yours. He is self-taught as well. Oh, nice. I, I totally respect that. Yeah, that's me, man. Um, I, I mentioned that before. I said um, I'm an animator, and people bought it. You know, I, I didn't really take any classes for it. Same with the programming. But then it shows for the real programmers out there that are watching me work. They can kind of go, oh, yeah, he has no clue what he's doing. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so game start time. Uh... I'm going to compress this down since last. Go a colon up there just to separate this. Time since last. Got that. All right. And then we'll say um, damage type like so. Uh, damage type. There it is. That's working so far. <clears throat> By the way, maybe I didn't catch it, but uh, do you work solo on Trouble Troubles in regards to coding and animation? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, the The art, the beautiful 2D art is farmed out. There's a very talented guy named Daniel Thomas, whom I've worked with for pretty much almost 10 years now. So the art is all him. Uh, everything else is me at the moment. Uh, I'm doing all the coding, just on necessity, unfortunately. Uh, even though the game is based on a famous kind of thing, it's still a situation where I'm still kind of financing it myself. <clears throat> so at this point, 
it's just me. Uh, for, and then the animation, as I mentioned, you know, I am an animator. So for that one, th that's kind of an advantage, I think, is the fact that I think a lot of games suffer some from, especially indie games can suffer from weaker animation. And the fact that I've been doing animation for 20 years uh, at this point means that usually I can put that tool to work in an inexpensive way, right? So I, I'm, I'm fortunate in that sense. But yeah, so for this game, at least... Um, you know, if the game does well, you know, hopefully use that money and I can start sharing the burden so I can get the games done faster and done more professionally. Uh, the Tremble's animation alone is just so fluid. <laughs> oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, so it's just all it is is a bunch of sprites, right? And it's just uh, individual tufts of, of fur that I just animated in Maya and just dropped in here. You know, and then the same thing with the, the Glomer, right? That was kind of fun. This is my first game that I did in 2D. Right, so it was kind of fun to play with, and what I tried to do was tweak the the positions of everything. So when he looks around, it looks like 3D, even though he's actually only 2D. You know, so like especially like when he runs and he walks back. So he's walking here, right? So I was trying to really sell the whole fake 3D look. Boom! There you go. Oh, you're in Germany. Oh, hey, welcome, welcome from Germany. Uh. That's cool. So you guys are like absolutely the other side of the world from me. That's too cool. I, and I appreciate you guys hanging out, man. I definitely appreciate you guys spending some time with me. <clears throat> Alright, so I got damage type. I got that plugged in. And then... Oops. Oh. Distance. Oop, spelled that wrong, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna be stickly. Distance at. I'll make it the same. Space that out and distance. Oh, damaged at. Alright, I'll call it damaged at. Just to be consistent. Damaged at. And that should be all I need for that to actually come up. Did I feel. I didn't! I read about it afterwards. Uh, I. Yeah, I. I mean. I read a lot of reports that those of us here in Las Vegas were supposedly feeling it, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I confess that I was sleeping in, so um, I, I didn't get to experience it. I but after living in California for 12 years, I had my share of earthquakes, right? Um, <laughs> well, no, he meant you too, uh, Lucina, because I mean, I I heard there's other places around the world that they could actually still detect it. Um, I was real bad in Southern California. Yeah, it's so, uh, <laughs> don't worry about it, buddy. But yeah, so funny story. Uh, there was one point, I was working on a TV series uh, called Animal Armageddon. We were animating dinosaurs for a TV show for uh, the Animal Planet. And it was so funny that we were, um, we were in an office that was right next to um, Venice Beach, California, right? And we're working away and a, a good size earthquake hits us right and it's like one of these things you're, you're kind of like you're going like this right and you know it starts small right kind of like this feels like someone's shaking your chair right and then it starts going bigger and we start looking around and it's kind of like oh earthquake but what happens is so funny that th those of us that have been living in california for years we kind of look at each other kind of going hey what do you think this is you know how big do you think this one is right but all the people that just moved to california they're all going like this <laughs> you know, they, they jump up and they're running out the door. They're they're running out in the streets, and we're just kind of kind of going, "Oh, this is a pretty good one. Look at this." You know, wow. <laughs> you know, you can you kind of get jaded. You know, which is stupid. I mean, it's, it is a stupid mindset. <laughs> Everybody for themselves. I love you guys, but screw you. <laughs> you know? But yeah, you know, it just you know, I mean, at that point, I'd been there for I mean, oh geez, at least nine years I think you know uh, they actually say that there is a good chance of another even big one happening in next 24 hours yeah I've read that as well um, oh so another funny one too <clears throat> and this is totally true story so this was around uh, 2000 right um, 2000 2001 I was working at Sony Imageworks uh, I was working as a data wrangler uh, a million years ago on Stuart Little 2 and the building, the entire building was set on rollers, right? For that exact purpose. So if an earthquake hits, right? You know, the, the 
the building rather than like shaking would roll right and we had a really good one that hit us right and uh yeah that must be japan and um so it was funny so we're working right and then the whole building starts swaying right and i'm looking at my boss and he's he's not even moving yet and i'm looking at him going um should we go outside right and i was relatively new i i honestly had just moved to, to california like a year before then right and I look at my boss, and he goes, um, they haven't set off the sirens yet, so no. <laughs> so we sat there. We were there, right, a while. I don't know how long, but I mean, it seemed like a long time before finally the sirens went off, and he looks at me and goes, okay, now we can go. <laughs> That's so stupid. We're on this giant stone three-story building, right? You know, and we're just kind of just sitting there debating whether or not we should get up and walk out. Uh, I heard it moves like two centimeters. Yeah, jeez. Uh, Japan will be earthquake immune by 2028. Two centimeters is actually pretty big for a building. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a fascinating experience, but let me see if I can actually show you. Um, image works. Let's see if I can show it here. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> see if this comes up and it doesn't yeah so this was the building <clears throat> right and then of course we were up on the the upper floor right uh, if I can actually get it to show up better there it goes yeah so this is the Sony Imageworks building so this is one of those buildings that was built on rollers right and uh, and it is the freaky thing about it. So it's the earthquake comes and goes, but the building's still just doing the back and forth rocking. It just goes on for a while, right? Which was just completely freaky, absolutely freaky. <clears throat> um, good thing you weren't there for the tsunami. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, that was a scary thing, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Guys, guess what? I'm going to duck out for a second, just do a quick restroom break, but uh, hang tight, and I'll be back in just a second, all right? Be right back. All right, I'm back. Let me come back here with, tell you what, I haven't done a bombing run today, so let me do a quick bombing run here. Here you go, guys. Everyone flies. Uh, Lucini, uh, did you work on Santa Clarita Diet? Uh, I did. Um, I'm not sure, did you see that on my IMDb page? Or uh, I did on season three, the most recent season that just came out, which unfortunately is his last season, but I had a lot of fun. So, um, oh yeah, you just checked it? Yes. Uh, so if you watch season three of Santa Clarita Diet, I'll see if I can find an example of it. And you see, um, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> I've been doing it a long time. I have been doing it for a long time, but oh, that's cute. that's nice. Um, so oh, Mr. Ball Legs, season three. Let's see if I can find something in here. Is a good example. Images, 
So, yeah, there you go. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, there you go. This is, yeah, this is a sequence where, it, <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, spoilers. Let me back out there. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, you worked on miniseries, uh, Center Created Diet, No Ordinary Family. You actually remember No Ordinary Family, really? That one was kind of like a fast one. I mean, it just kind of came and went. Um, v, Fringe, Mr. Ball Legs was so good. I watched all seasons already. I thought it was such a funny show. I really did. I laughed so hard. You know, I was actually a fan of the show before I even got a chance to work on it. What is your name? My name? My name is Dustin. If you're asking about me, uh, here you go. If you're curious, I don't know if it's, I don't know if I put it on the page or not, but in case I didn't. There you go. So in case you're wondering what he's talking about. There you go. Here's a link. Uh, so yeah, there's a link to my IMDB page, which shows you all the stuff I've worked on over the, the last 20 years. At least the stuff I can remember. I think there's some things that I forgot about, didn't include. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so this one was fun. This was one, and it was funny because they kept adding more eyes to this one. Originally, it was just like a couple in, in the, the right in the foreground, but they kept adding more. But, um, so the funny story, I'll tell you the funny story about this. So, um, it actually started with this. So the company that I did it for is a company called Zoic Studios that I've worked with on and off since 2004, right? And, you know, I, like I said, I'm in, in Vegas, but I, I went back to LA to go work there for just a couple of weeks. And I was supposed to work on a, a, a movie, but the movie got delayed. So they said, we'll let you start on Santa Clarita Diet, right? But um, if this guy did the eyes, I hate him. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was kind of freaky, wasn't it? When they all just kind of, right, all the way around. Had no clue you were this successful at the industry. Well, yeah, it was a long time coming. It was, you know, but yeah, it's, in, it's, it's been nice because the animation work helps subsidize the game development. So, so the true story about this. So what happened is the fact that... Um, so I did the scene here, right, when she taps on the glass, right? And then Mr. Balllegs does this thing where he kind of goes, <gasps> and he looks up to, like, look who it is, and he kind of goes, oh, right? And he, like, dejected. It's like, you know, it's, it's not mommy. It's just someone else, and, like, looks depressed. So I did that, and uh, my supervisor said, I love it, but it's way too big, right? The Mr. Balllegs has always been more subdued, right? So you have to like dial it down. So I, I dial the performance down and he goes, you know what? That's still too much. Dial it down again. So I, I dial it down again. So he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll take all three versions, right? And send them out to, to Netflix and let them decide, right? And they came back and they said, we love the first one. And I was in, right? So as soon as they said, okay, you can do more bigger animations. That's when I started going nuts, man. Every time I was, I kept getting called back, right? They're kind of going, no, he's too much, right? You know, and there's like the one part where uh, uh, Ramona, she picks him up and sets him down on the, on the table, right? And then the spider does this little happy dance where he goes back and forth. I was actually recreating the happy dance that was from the Amazing Stories episode called Family Dog that was directed by Brad Bird. So that was actually my, my hidden little tribute to Brad Bird. I'll show you that. Um, Family dog, amazing stories. So if you remember the moment specifically, um, let's see if it's any one of these in here. Yeah, it's when he was in the canine training area. But, um, and th this is like the sequence right after it, you know, after he does it. But he jumps out and he does this little happy dog dance. And that's actually what I tried to mimic with Mr. Ball Legs when he's on the table, when Ramona sets him down and Ramona, uh, the, Mr. Ball Legs is happy to see Ramona. But um, <laughs> uh, my manager noticed that you have been uh, starting this stream for a very long time now. Uh, been... Oh, <laughs> my manager noticed that you've been staring at the stream for. Mm. Oh, oh, when, yeah, when oh, gotcha. When she walks up to him the first time, right? When she walks up in the store, I love that. I kind of, I totally believe the fact that Ramona was just supposed to be like a one episode character, but she was so perfect. That delivery, that, 
No, I totally understand it. You want that one because it cleans much better. I just, I love the way she delivered those lines. And I think they loved her so much that they kept expanding her character, right? So that's, I don't know that for a fact. I mean, unfortunately, when I work on these shows, I frequently never get any context, right? So sometimes it's hard. Uh, in this case, I was actually fortunate. They, they let me see the episodes beforehand, right? So I got to know the fate of how the show finishes out at the very end and had to keep it myself for the longest time. But so funny story. This is true. So if you go back and watch um, my YouTube channel, right? YouTube Scary Robot Games, uh, some of my older streaming broadcasts. It's kind of funny because the last couple of episodes of Santa Clarita Diet, I got to work on from home, right? But there'd be one of the things that I would finish and there'd be nothing for me to do. So I start doing the stream and then I get a, uh, a note from my supervisor going, oh, we need to tweak this scene. So if you watch some of these streams, I'd have to tell you, I have to go look to find a specific example, but I'll be in the stream and I go, oh, sorry guys, I have to go work on this other show that I can't tell you about, right? But that was actually Santa Clarita Diet, you know? And Oh, I gotta find it. See if it's here. Do I have it handy? Let's see. Is this it? I think this is it. Or is it? Yeah. So, so funny story. So I went to uh, E3 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, I, several weeks ago, right? I went back to LA to go to E3, and then um, I was actually the family had a car that I had to drive back from LA back to Las Vegas, right? And I started driving. And I realized that I didn't have a, a charger adapter for my phone, right? So I had to stop at the uh, Target, right, on the way. And I just pulled over at the, the closest Target I could find, and I went inside, and I, I buy the adapter, and I'm looking at the receipt, and I start laughing out loud because I realized that I'm buying an adapter in Santa Clarita. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm looking around at all these people. It's like they have no idea, right, that I was actually working on the show that was uh, – anyways. So I actually held on to the receipt because it cracked me up, you know, and I, I, did, I didn't even think about it. When I pulled off the road, I had no context. I had no idea where I truly was in that, you know, but I literally was in the center of, and then I, I see like a, a security truck, right? Welcome to the city of Santa Clarita. And I'm kind of going, oh, this is too weird. <laughs> True story. So that was a fun experience. But yeah, that was a fun show. I'm so bummed that it didn't get a season four. Um, I really would have loved to come back and do some more uh, Mr. Ball like stuff, but you know, it's it, it, that was a lot of fun. I really did have a. Sometimes some of the animation stuff I get to work on, you know, it's just kind of like okay, we're done. But that one, I really would have enjoyed working on another season. Yeah, especially with that cliffhanger. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, I didn't, and I didn't have any other inside information. Unfortunately, they didn't tell me anything, so I, I didn't really have any true context, right? But, and it's kind of funny because the original way I have the spider doing that move, right, was originally he kind of like goes up and just kind of does it in this really creepy, slow way, right? But they go, no, it has to be fast. And so now it goes into the one you see now, which is like right into it, which I like mine better, but it made, the note was, you know, it makes no sense that somebody would let this thing go slowly up there and not go, whoa, right? So they were, they were right. It was better if it went fast, but to me, it was just creepier when it went like this, you know? It just went slowly, right? But anyways, yeah, I think fast is better. Yeah, well, Netflix agrees with you. And and actually, so it was really great because my supervisor uh, contacted me a couple weeks later and he just told me, he said, by the way, I just wanna let you know that Netflix was really, really happy with all the stuff of Mr. Ball Legs. So that, n that never happens, by the way. So I was really flattered. Uh, slow would be better visually, but fast makes more sense. It makes more sense, and yeah, it definitely is a kind of like creepy, like, oh, there's nothing you can do, it's too late kind of thing, but yeah. Yep, yep, I agree. I was wrong. You know, the animator in me was going, but it looks so much cooler, but the, you know, the person watching the TV series would go, yeah, but that's stupid. <laughs> so yeah, they were right to call me out on that one and say, you did that one. You gotta do that one differently. All right, so let's see. Um, yeah, that's not something I have to worry about, so let me drop this out of full screen. <clears throat> Oops. I thought I dropped that. Let's try it again. And there he goes. And it didn't show up. That's not good. Oh, this is for game over versus 
the lost menu. So I'm going to revisit this one in a second. Show lose menu, and then I'll post it here. All right, let's try that again. Yeah. But that was a fun one. It was cool because, you know, so that was the thing when I, 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 I kind of trailed off there, but I was talking about the fact that I, I went to L.A. to go start working on a movie. Movie gets delayed, so I end up working on the first two episodes of Santa Clarita Diet, but they were so happy with what I started doing that even though I was scheduled to go home, and I had to go home, right? I had other stuff, and they let me take like a remote device that allowed me to sort of, sort of like teleconnect in and finish the series from home. So I was I was very flattered they let me do that. Um, that wasn't the first time actually I ever worked remotely. I also on um, shoot the uh, the the Wool series. Oh crud! I'm blank on the name. It's the other Netflix show. Uh, what did you work on in No Ordinary Family? Uh, basically, whenever he's jumping around and he's like flailing in the air and then landing, right? Uh, that that was me. Hemlock Grove, thank you. Hemlock Grove, the 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 scene with the wolves in the final episode when they're pulling him out of the ground, uh, that was mine. It's, it's in the, the credits there, but um, that was one I got to finish from home as well. Uh, twenty years. Uh, I've been doing it basically 20 years. Um, I moved out to LA in 2000, but I, I actually already started doing a little animation work before I came out there. Um, so yeah, basically 20. Um, yeah, that was that was kind of a fun one too. Uh, the funniest thing I had about that one, there was one episode where there's like there's bad guys scaling the side of a building, right? And if if you remember the No Ordinary Family, if you remember the show. You might remember the scene because he's just gotten his powers, right? So he doesn't know how to um, tailor them yet, right? He's, he's still learning. So he, he kind of like tries to judge the building and calculate in his head what he needs to do. And he like takes his running step and he jumps, but he completely misguesses, right? And he falls short of the guys, impacts into the side of the building, right? And then just starts plummeting towards the earth, right? And then the camera goes onto the ground looking up and then we see him flailing as he's falling straight at camera. And I did this animation that I thought looked pretty good, but the note was, I don't feel like he's thinking yet. And that was, that was like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, and I think the solution was, was what I did was I cheated his upper body. And I think you'd have to go back and actually look and see if I'm correct. But I think what it is, I cheated his upper body. So I made his head come around sooner and I made him like look straight at camera. Right. And that was it. That was the magic item that made him go yeah that's it you're done <laughs> which is yeah so when a guy hits a building and flies at you i gotta feel like he's thinking you know kind of a strange nebulous note all right oh crap that didn't that's not good game start time is total crap that's a zero zero and yeah nothing came out right there oh. all right let's throw some other layers of this um uh, is it uh, where do you come from I would guess UK I, I think Adair is actually an Irish name um, but as for me specifically no man I'm a total mutt man um, I am a complete and utter mutt there there's some of me is Irish some of me is Australian on my mom's side um, and I think there's a few others mixed in for good measure so yeah I am the definition sort of like the Bill Murray line from <laughs> from stripes, you know, I'm a mutt, but I'm American mutt. <laughs> so that's it, man. I'm a, just a total mixture. But uh, yeah, I, I think Adair uh, originated in Ireland. I believe so. I, I guess I should be better on my my personal history, but you know, I, I hate to admit I'm not that knowledgeable. Uh, with me, it is complicated because there was Yugoslavia. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah. You definitely have a much more. Uh, Interesting complex background for sure. With all Balkan names, yeah. <laughs> all that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Herzegovina. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's the old saying? Uh, May you live in interesting times, right? I guess that, that is the old turn of phrase. Um, I think that's true, but only up to a point. So, <laughs> you know is one country 
<laughs> Bosnia and Herzegovina is one country. Okay. Mm. So yeah. So I mean, I I've had a very docile life uh, compared to many, but you know, had a good time. I've enjoyed everything I've done. I I've, I mean, I like I said, I moved to California in 2000, and that was for one purpose, and that was to do animation and. I, I've been very, very fortunate. I've been very appreciative of the fact that over 20 years, I've got to work on some super TV shows. I mean, especially like, I mean, early days was Battlestar Galactica, and that was, for me, a childhood dream. Because, I mean, I grew up watching the original TV series as a kid, right? And the fact that I got to animate Cylons for the, the remake, and, you know, still to this day, I can't believe they paid me to do that, man. <laughs> All right, so what I need to do here is bust out the game controller come back in here and I'm gonna make all these guys public so I can hopefully get a better understanding of what I'm doing absolutely wrong here and I'm sure it's because I'm mixing and the stuff's not getting transferred correctly because I'm just getting the zero values <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure how it goes in USA but how did you have money to pay rent when you moved to California oh no that's a great question um, I'd saved up a little bit um, but it was a situation where I, you know, I moved there to do animation, but unfortunately I wasn't getting jobs as an animator. So I, I literally, I took the first job that I could get. Um, uh, yeah, I was, I, so I was doing animation already, but kind of like what I was talking about before. Remember I was saying that, you know, um, I had to prove to somebody that I could work as an animator, right? In the same way I was telling you that you have to prove to someone that you can work as a programmer, right? And that was my biggest challenge. I had some stuff to show, but it wasn't enough to convince them, right? So when I first moved out there, my first job was not as an animator, but as I mentioned back in 2000, my first job was working as a data wrangler. Uh, if you look at Stuart Little 2, my, my credits are listed as, and it, it was funny because I was so desperate for work. I had to pay the rent, right? I was so desperate for work that it said the job was, uh, you know, you need a computer degree. I didn't have it. They said you needed to be fluent in Linux. Never touched it before. Uh, I spent the weekend, I programmed, I set up one of my computers with Linux and I bought a book and I gave myself like a, a, a quick crash course and I, I, I just completely faked it, man. You know, the old fake it till you make it kind of thing. So I went in there and I just, I explained to them who I was, what I could do, and they're like, you know, are you familiar with Linux? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, man. I, yeah, you know, grep, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I can, I know Linux, no problem. They said, great, okay, you're hired. So and then I had to actually learn, <laughs> you know. So, so no, and I did that. I did that for a year and a half. Um, uh, true, funny story because, you know, I, what happened was I was a, a, about five or six months in working as a data wrangler and all you're doing is you, you're just archiving everyone else's work right there's nothing creative about it you're just making sure that everything gets backed up everyone's jobs are are proceeding and if they're not proceeding you have to contact them and explain to them their job isn't working right but nothing creative right so it was you no know, it was demoralizing right since I wasn't creating anything but I was happy to be paying the rent but it got worse when I was like six months in and I got told that I was going on to the night shift for like the rest of the show and that was like for like a year right so I spent like a year working the night shift and part of me was like really bitter and angry about it but part of me used it as a motivation to work harder you know and so all my free time went towards creating new animation to try and get myself a job and you know and then what I did was also working the night shift you got paid a bonus so I, I just saved up all my cash so by the time Stuart Little 2 had finished I had saved up a good amount of cash and I just completely shut down um, I moved out of Hollywood and I moved up into the valley at Sherman Oaks and I rented a room right I rented a cheap room in someone else's apartment and I just stayed there and kept working and kept applying until I finally got a, a job doing you know actual visual effects work so that was my that was my methodology, right? I got any job I could find to pay the bills, and I used that as a tool to finance myself, so I could get a real VFX job. Uh, same with my dad; he got fired uh, when I got born, 
and he was desperate without jobs so he just offered a job that he had no experience about and had to learn so quickly <clears throat> what are the chub chubs the attack of the chub chubs that was a, a short animated film that was stuck on the beginning of uh, men in black 2 the movie which is a terrible movie by the way men in black 1 is great men in black 3 is fantastic men in black 2 is terrible um, but it was Sony, they wanted to try and make their, their own animated short film. They hadn't done anything, you know, this is before open season and all the films that they ended up doing later on. So they wanted to sort of like test the system to see if they can make a, an animated short film. So they sent out an open notice to all the employees and they said, hey, if you'd like to pitch an idea for a short film, you can do it. And I did. I actually, I submitted uh, an idea, um, but uh, obviously I didn't get chosen. But uh, there was a compositor, um, Jeff uh, Wolverton, who was actually sitting very close to where we were. And he was the one that came up with the idea of the attack of the Chub Chubs. And his idea was chosen. And, you know, and it was no, that was it. Uh, but then they sent an email saying, hey, we need people to do voices. So if you want to show up at this time on this, the Sony studio lot, right, you can do it. And I, I, I jumped at it, man. I ran over there. And I, I got to record, and just background. I think they gave me credit as a glorf, but I, th I think I was just background voices. So, um, let's see. Let's see if there's, yeah, okay, wow, they actually posted the whole thing there. So it's five minutes long. I won't subject you to it, but it's the idea you just have this goofy kind of nerdy character that uh, he's a janitor, and he comes across these cute little fuzzy characters that when they get provoked and turn into uh, turn into like these giant teeth wielding monstrosities that shred all the bad guys. Uh, let's see this image is here. Yeah, so that there he is with the cute chub chubs. Let's see, there's a picture. Of, yeah, and there there you go. And that is what the chub chubs look like when they're not so cute. You know, they get all teethy <laughs> and they 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 do damage. So there you go. That is the attack of the Chub Chubs. So for that one, I get credit as a voice talent. And, you know, and that's just me just making noise in the background. I think I went, Arr, uh, oh, right, that kind of stuff. So when you hear them getting shredded in the background, that's that's me getting torn up. Better than nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was happy to do it. <clears throat> you know, I got no pay out of it, but it was just fun to do at the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let me see if I can actually get this thing to show me some information. And maybe it's hopefully something that's just getting processed incorrectly. And it should pop up right here at the top. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, right there. It's wrong right from the get-go. Okay, so that's bad. Excuse me. I, so, time time is a long? Is that what time time is? Anyone know offhand? Oops. Uh, let's see. This is equal. I thought time time was a long value. Is that right? No, it's a float. Really? Okay, now what is up with that? Now why would that be zero? So, how could that be zero? Oh, because I didn't start the game yet. My fault. <clears throat> Yeah, so yeah, if you're look, yeah, give it a look. I don't know if there's any other shows in there. I'm I'm happy to talk about all the stuff I worked on a million years ago. And it still didn't do it. Really? All right, now I'm annoyed. Let's see. Got to bounce now, man. It's late here. Runes. No worries, man. Thanks for coming around again, man. Nice, nice to see you again. Have yourself a great weekend. I actually got my day straight now. I, I remember that's Friday. Oh, shoot. It's 501. Oh, I got to go. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have to head out and go pick up my, my banners for Comic-Con. So thanks, man. I was going to just shoot right past my time. Uh, it's just 2 a.m. <laughs> it's just 2 a.m. Well, it's 5 p.m. for me, and I have to run over to the print shop, and I got to pick up my banners, um, and then I'm going to have like the cloth for the, for the table, and also the decals, which are going to go in the arcade cabinets. Which I'll see if I can take pictures of. So, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for, like, reminding me about the time. I have to shut down, guys. I hate to do this. I know I normally go to 6, which is another hour from now. But I really have to cut the cord now and head out the door. But, 
Yeah, runes. Uh, Lucini, thanks, guys. Thanks for all the conversation. That was really enjoyable, man. I thank you guys for hanging out with me today and chatting away. Um, I will be back. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. I don't know if I'm going to be back on Monday. Uh, love the stream. We'll be back next time. Thanks. I, I may come back next week. It depends on how much I can do over the weekend because next week I have to prep for Comic-Con, right? For the convention, which is the following week. But I promise I will at least do some kind of stream from Comic-Con live. Uh, I don't know when or which day or what time yet, but I will do that. Um, I'll see if I can come back next week. I won't promise it, but if, I, if I'm if i not going to be doing it, I will update the uh, Twitch page to let you guys know. But hopefully I'll find the time and be able to hang with you guys next week. Otherwise, I will at some point broadcast live from San Diego Comic-Con. and You guys can see my booth there. But until then, you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And uh, can you link your YouTube? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's just, uh, here you go. Uh, let's go about uh, games, right? Let me double check to make sure I'm not lying about that. Nope, that's not correct. Oh, well, it helps when you actually type it correctly. <laughs> Hold on. I can't type. I inverted the S and the E at the end there. There it goes. Let me, here we go. There it is corrected. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, those are the, some of the older streams. And you can also find a bunch of other older stuff there. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. So let me head out the door here. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next week. If not, I promise I will make time at San Diego Comic-Con to say hello to you guys. All right? All right, until then, you guys have yourself a fantastic weekend. Uh, I'll be checking that out. Have a nice day. Thanks, you as well. Have a great weekend. I will talk to you guys real soon, all right? Adios.